Okay, thank you for joining back. Okay, this was where we stopped. So let me go over the first iteration. So let me go over what how we started. Okay, you are going to choose two guesses, the lower limit and the upper limit. So these two guesses you have, you are sure that in between these two values, the root is there, but you're not sure where exactly the root is, but you know that the root is actually somewhere in between these two values. Then the second step is to find the midpoint of these two values using this formula, which you calculated as 14. The third step is to evaluate this function here. So the value of the function at the lower limit and the value of the function at this root you calculated. You are not, this is not the actual root, but this is the estimate. So you evaluate it. So the lower limit is 12. You have 12 here. Then the upper limit is, and the root you calculated here is 14. That's why you have 14 here. Eventually, you evaluate the root. Then you're going to, when we evaluated it, we got this expression as a positive number. So this, since this is a positive number, we know that the root is at the upper subregion. So we're going to replace the lower limit with 14. Before the lower limit was 12. So in the first iteration, the lower limit was 12. But as a result of the calculation we made, we are going to replace the lower limit with 14. So you are going to go over step two again. So we are sure that the root is between these two values, but we don't know where. So we are going to find the midpoint using this equation. So the midpoint is 15. We evaluate this expression and the lower limit is now 14, while the root we calculated is now 15. So we're going to arrive at this expression. When we multiply it together, we get a negative number. And because we have a negative number, that means that the root is at the, uh, we have a negative number. So that means that the root is at the lower subregion. And that is, means that you're going to set the upper limit to be 14, uh, sorry, to be 15, which is the 15 we got here. So we're going to set the upper limit in the third iteration, the upper limit to be set as 15. Remember previously, the upper limit was 16. But at the third iteration, the upper limit will be set to 15. So we know that the root is between here, but we are not sure where. So we keep narrowing down our search. So we're going to find the midpoint using this equation. Then we got 14.5. Then we evaluate this expression here. This is the lower limit, and this is the estimated root. Then we got these values. Then when we multiply, we got a positive number. And a positive number means that we should set the lower limit to be the value of this root we calculated. If this was a negative number, it is the upper limit we are going to set. But since this is a positive number, it's the lower limit we are going to set to this. So therefore, the lower limit now becomes 14.5 in the next iteration. We know that the root is between these two values. Then we calculate the midpoint. We're going to calculate the midpoint using this formula. So we got the midpoint as 14.75. Then you evaluate this expression A. And when we evaluated the expression, we arrived at this. This is a positive number. The positive number means that you should, in the next iteration, you should set the lower limit to be 14.5, which is the estimated root we calculated A. So in the next iteration, we set the lower limit as 14.75, while the upper limit remains the same, it doesn't change. And we're going to evaluate the midpoint using this expression. So we got 14.875. Then you evaluate the, the value of the function at the lower limit and the value of the function at the estimated root. When you do that, we arrive at the negative number. A negative number means that in the next iteration, you should set the upper limit to be the value of the root you calculated here. So at the sixth iteration, in place of uh, the previous upper limit, the previous upper limit was 15. 
So in place of 15, we are going to replace it with 14.875. Then we do it again. We know that the root is between this point, is between 14.75 and 14.875. So we calculate the midpoint using this expression. We get 14.8125. Then we evaluate the, this expression. And when we evaluated it, we got a negative number. A negative number means that you should set the upper limit to be this route you calculated here. So as you would observe, uh, you're getting prior. We are already in the sixth iteration and we are wasting time. So you would ask that, when are you going to stop? And you're going to stop. This is the true route. And I've told you that uh, we knew that this is the route from, it's just try and error, we, we know that this is the route because there's no exact solution. So we know that this is the route, but, and when are you going to stop? So you're going to stop, remember in the second class when we were estimating the, fun, uh, the exponential function, and uh, we did it using, uh, we did it using a computer program. And in that computer program, we said that you should stop when the number of iterations is, you should stop when the number of iterations is like 100 iterations or, or when your error, or when error is less than a certain value. Let's say our error is less than, uh, let's say 0.5%. So, when do you stop? You would, you can just say that you want to stop when your error is less than some certain value or after you've done it for, let's say, 100 or 1,000 iterations. So that's when you're going to stop. So that means that this one is not actually feasible because we cannot do uh, this by hand. And let's go with this. Let's go with the error. So in the last class, we, we talked about errors because like I told you in the last class, you're using numerical methods and numerical methods are approximations. So definitely you have errors. So the, the issue of errors would keep coming on and on in this course. So if you don't understand what we did last week, you have to really understand it because you're using numerical methods. Numerical methods are not the exact solution. So obviously there's going to be errors and you need to, there are going to be errors and you need to calculate the errors. So we, I presented these two, two formulas. This is the estimated error. So the estimated error is the current approximation minus previous approximation divided by current approximation. Why the true error or the exact error is the true value minus the approximation divided by the true value. So this, you can either use the two of them. And I told you that this is the best one to use. But in a case where you cannot, you don't know the true value. Like for instance, in this question, there's no way we could, we could get the true solution, the exact solution. Though we, I just presented it to you because I wanted to calculate the true error. So in case where you don't have the, the true value, you are going to use the current approximation minus the previous approximation divided by the current approximation. So this is the estimated error. So let's calculate the error. So for the first iteration, you know this is the current approximation. We have approximated the rate as 14, but there was no previous approximation because we just started. So you don't have this. But for the true error, this is the true value. Then this is the current approximation. So this is the error we got. Then for the second iteration, this was our previous approximation. This was the current approximation of XR. Then we got this and this as the error. So this is the estimated and this is the true error. So you just keep on at the third iteration, the fourth iteration, fifth iteration. Then if you would observe the, the trend, at the first iteration, you have 5%. At the, 
at the second iteration, you had 1.3 for the true error. At the third, you had 2.0. At the fourth, you had 0 0.3. And at the fifth, you had 0 0.5, approximately. So that's for the true error. Then for the estimated error, so we had six here, yeah, we had three percent here, then we had 1.6, then 0 0.8, and 0 0.4. So you can observe that the error is reducing with more iterations, which is what we expect for both. And we observe that at the sixth iteration, the estimated error, it fell between, uh, it fell below 0 0.5. So we said we're going to stop when the error is less than 0 0.5. So we can just say that, uh, when are we going to stop? So, so you're going to, you might say that you want to stop when the estimated error is 0 0.5. But in this case, we're not using the, we're not using the true error. The reason we're not, we're not using the true error, we have two reasons. The first reason is that you may not know the true value. So in that case, you cannot even calculate the true error. And the second reason why we're not using the true error is that if you look at it, yeah, the true error was 5%. Yeah, it was, it reduced to 1.3. Now it's increased to 2.0. So the, the true error is, increasing and decreasing. So if you are saying let the true error be less than uh, 1%, at this point, we've gotten to less than, if we say the true error should be less than 1.5%. At this point, we've gotten to less than 1.5%. But then, if you had done the next iteration, the true error actually increased. So we are going to be making use of, it's best in the case of the bisection method, to make use of the estimated error. And I said the reason, the first reason being that the estimated, you don't know the true value. So you cannot even calculate the true error. That's the first reason. Then the second reason is that the error keeps, yeah, it's decreased and yeah, it's increasing. So if you are set it to less than a certain value and at this iteration is going to stop, but air is increasing. So that means that is not so reliable. So it is better to use the estimated error for your stopping condition. So we're going to go to, so now we, we did the, uh, we calculated the, the root by and, and so now we are going to use Excel VBA. So we're going to use programming to, to actually do it now. Okay, there's a question. Does it mean that when doing the iteration, we do it alongside the error so has no one to stop doing the iteration? Exactly. Yes. So the answer to your question is yes. So as you are as you are calculating the roots, uh, so this was our first iteration. This is our first iteration here. So as you are calculating the the root you have to keep track of the error so i did it separately which is quite wrong so i did this separately here so immediately you calculate the for the first iteration what you were supposed to do now is to calculate the error exactly so now you know that your error is at uh, 5.4 percent so the answer to your question is yes Immediately you you have your first iteration, calculate the error and see what the error is. So yeah, we said that we should stop when the error is 0 0.5. So now we're at 5.4. So we know that we need to do another iteration. So yes, you keep track of the error as you are uh, calculating the root. So now let's do it by code and uh, let's implement the same thing we did here, now using uh, a code, uh, Excel VBA. So let me go back to, let me go to Excel here. 
Okay. Let me go to Excel here. So I would go to Visual Basic. Okay, so this is the Excel implementation of the same thing we did uh, using AND calculation. So we created a function. The name of the function is bisect. So the name of the function can be anything. And these are the parameters we pass into the function. The first one is the lower limit. The second one is the upper limit. The third parameter is the estimated error, while the fourth parameter is the maximum number of iterations you need to go. So for the bisection method, you need to know, first of all, you need to know the up lower limits and the upper limits. So you're going to be giving, and if you're not giving, you have to estimate it graphically. So these are the four parameters you pass into it. Then what is the bisection method doing? First of all, you calculate the root. So you need to keep track of the old root in order to get the error because we're using the estimated error. So this is the current error. This is the old error. And this is the current error. So the root is given by the midpoint. That's the lower limit plus the upper limit divided by two. So this is where we keep track of the iterations because we need to keep on going to the next iteration provided our, our condition is not satisfied. And this is where we calculated the error. Then you are going to evaluate this function. That's the value of the, of the function at the lower limit and the value of the function at the root, at this root you just calculated. Then if this expression, we call it test, if it is negative, that means that the root lies in the lower subregion. Then you set your upper limit to be XR. If it's greater than zero, that means that the root is in the upper subregion. So you will set the lower limit to be XR. Then if else, that means that you've you've read your exact root, so the error is zero. Then this is the stopping condition. This is our loop. This is a do loop. Like I said, the do loop will keep on iterating forever. So it's only when this condition is satisfied. And the condition, okay, there's a question. So what is x r o equal to x r? What does it mean? Does that mean that x r o is the same as x r? Okay, that is a good question. So what this means, this is X R O. This is the X R O, and this is X R. X R O is the previous approximation. So when you when you start the iteration, you know you have you calculated X R. So at the next iteration, X R will change. We change to another value. But before you change it, this is at the point we changed it to the current value. So before we change it to the current value, we said that put in the previous value of XR into XR old. So XR old, XR old, it stores the value of the previous approximation. So let me just write it in. X R O stores the value of the previous of the previous approximation approximation root. So we we actually want to get the root. So in VBA in Excel VBA, you use this to indicate a comment. So a comment is not going to, when it's running, the compiler is going to ignore this because anything that starts with this is going to see it as a comment. So um, I put this here. So if you are writing a program and you want to, you want to so that when next you go over it, you'll be sure what is really happening. So 
I'm just quoting this sentence here. The computer doesn't understand this sentence. So if I'd remove this one, it's going to execute it and there's going to be an error and the computer doesn't understand what this line means. So this is saying that this is a comment and it's just for your benefit so that you'll be able to know what is happening. So XR old is the XR old is the it stores the previous approximation. So when you when you have the first iteration, you calculated XR. So now you know you are in a do loop. This is a do loop. So when you do it the second time, you want to track the previous error. So you are telling your computer that put in the previous value of the root into this variable XR old. The reason why this variable is very, very important, we should have just ignored it. But the reason why it is important is because we want to calculate the estimated error. And in the estimated error, you need the previous approximation, XR old. This is the current approximation. This is the current approximation. And this is the previous approximation. So when the computer runs at the first iteration, when the computer runs at the first iteration, it calculates the value of XR. Then when you have another iteration, is going to, you are saying that store the previous value into XR old so that you are able to calculate the estimated error. So that's why we're using it here. I think there's another question. Okay. Why do we have a loop under exit do and not in the same line as in exit do loop? Okay, that's a good question. Okay, so this, this, the, the answer to your question is that that's the syntax. This is the do loop. It starts here. This is the do. Then you're going to stop here. So this is the syntax for do loop in Visual Basic. And this particular line is the stopping condition so you are going to ex this loop is going to continue till infinity the only way the only time when you are going to stop is when the estimated error is less than the error you specified here no when you are calling the function you have to say that okay i want the error to be less than let's say 0 0.1 so you you're going this value you are not is going to put it there so when the error the error that is calculated is is less than this value you put in then exit the loop leave the loop then exit do so it's going to go out of this loop and it's going to come to this portion so that's the syntax so it's saying just exit do so you, if you put do loop like you are trying to say it's going to give an error here because that's not the syntax and the computer doesn't is not the syntax it's not the way to do it. And the computer, the compiler is going to give an error. So the syntax is exit do. So just, this is the syntax, exit do. Then this do loop is the syntax for uh, infinite, is an infinite uh, number of iteration. So that is the syntax. So here is the condition at which to leave the loop. So you cannot put it here. You cannot say exit do loop. If you look at this statement carefully, this if is, is highlighted in blue, or is highlighted in blue, then this two is in blue. So if you are creating an expression, like when I put the do loop here now, it's turned into black. So it's saying that is I'm not even correct because it's from the indication. So this is the syntax for. Can you see it has already given an error here yeah, because uh, it's saying that I'm not correct. So that's why this is the syntax, exit do. That's the way to do it. So if the, the error that you set here, when you calculated the error, if it's less than the error you put in here, then you exit the loop. Or if the number of iterations is greater than I max. So if you've put, so if I put in 100 here and I've reached the 100 iteration 
I'm going to stop. So this is the stopping condition. So stop if either this is true or, or this is true. So at the end of the, at the end of a function, you have to, because it's the root we want to calculate. So the name of the function, which is bisect, you would, you would equate it to the, to the value you are actually after. So we want the function to return the root, the last root. So we say that this root should be equal to the name of the function. So that's the way we do it in VBA. Then we have another function. This is the function for the model. So the name of the function is f, and it's the parameter it has is x or c. I could have put in c or so I just decided to use x. So this is the the model that we want to calculate. So it's going to uh, the this function is going to execute a. It's going to execute a, and it's also going to execute a. You are calling this function a and a. So remember in the first class, I said you can call a function within another function. So we define the model. This is the model we're working on. Then we called it a and we called it a in order to evaluate this expression. Okay. So we have it a. So let me go back to, let me go back to uh, the Excel. So here now, I put in these values. So these are the values that you are going to, your, you need when you want to actually call the, the function. So you need the lower limit, you need the upper limit, you need the estimated error, and you need the maximum number of iterations. So I set the lower limit as 12, the upper limit as 16, the estimated error as 0 0.5, then the I, um, the number of iteration as 100. So similar to what we did in the first class, when you type this out, you select everything, you go to formulas, create from selection, then left arrow, then okay. So that means that 12 is XL, then XU is 16, ES is 0 0.5, then IMAX is 100. So if I want to call it, I will just call it using, the name of the function is bisect. This lower limit is in blue, the upper limit is in green, the estimated error is in purple, while the IMAX is in brown. So when I click enter, so this is the, this is the value is going to calculate. Let me change this one to, we know that the root is 14.8011. So we know that we are not there yet. If I change this to 0 0.1, let's see if it's going to be, okay, when I change it to 0 0.1, I have is much more better. My my value of the root is much more better because I'm saying I let the error be less than 0 0.1, which is much much more better, much more accurate. Let me say 0 0.01. Okay, and I click 0 0.01 is actually much more accurate. Let me make it much more accurate again, 0 0.001. When I do that, it's, we know that the true error is 14.8001. So actually, we are getting closer and closer to the, uh, to, the, to the true value. So this is the way you do it in Excel VBA. Let me go back to the, okay, there's a question. Is it possible to declare the variables, that is the values in Excel in the code? I don't understand what you mean by that, but uh, what I think you mean, you mean is that, can I declare the variables in Excel in the code? Yes, yes you can actually yes you can declare the variables 
in the code. You can do that if you want to. So if you want to do that, the way you do that is, let me go back to the Excel code. Okay, you are saying that, can I make X, X, uh, X the lower limits, 12, then the upper limit, 16. Yes, you can do that. You can, you can include it in the code. But if you, if you include it in the code, that's like, it's going to change your, the program entirely because, let me delete it. You can include it in the code if you want, but when you are calling it, that means that if you, okay, let me just answer your question properly. If you say that XL is equal to 12, then the lower limit is equal to 16, then ES is equal to 0 0.5, and IMAX is equal to 100. It's, it's okay, it's fine if you want to do this, but when you are calling it, that means that you don't need these parameters again because you've already defined the parameters. The reason why you have these parameters is because when you are calling it, you have the option of specifying what you want these parameters to be. But now that you've actually defined all these parameters in the code, then there's no point. This, you should just leave the definition like this. You should leave it like this. Then when you are calling it, you don't need to, you don't need to put in all these parameters. So let me try and see if it's going to work. But if it doesn't work, it's because we did not declare it. So if I had put in these parameters here, I don't need the, the if I had put in the parameters within this code, I don't need the argument here. So let me call it and see what happens. Delete this one. Delete this one. Okay. So let me call it. Okay. So yeah, like I suspected, you have to define the variables. So you have to say din din x one as integer then dim x u as integer then dim e s as double and here should be double then dim high max so you first define it. Okay, there's not going to be dim here. There's not going to be dim here. Then this should be a capital letter. This should be a capital letter. Then capital. Then capital. Okay. So it's giving an error. So it's because I, I was saving while debugging. So let me close it now. And let me go back to, let me close it and try to reopen it. Okay. Okay, so, okay, I think there's a question. There's a dim before high max. Okay, let me check. Uh, let me go back to Visual Basic. All right. Okay, so let me try to run it again. 
how to bisect okay it's giving an error so i will just okay there's a question we can't see the screen only one thing yes i've corrected that just one thing at the beginning the excel screen okay let me share the excel screen Okay. Um. Sorry. All right. Okay, so it's, let me just open my Excel screen again. So like I said, if you, if you put in the parameters inside the code, then you don't need to, to call it again. Um, equal to my set. Okay, it's giving an error now. So I'll just, I don't know why the error is there. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, let me share my screen now. So, let me share, so. Okay, so like I said, if you if you if you decide to put these parameters here, you don't you don't need to when you are calling it, you just you would remove all these parameters. So you don't need to put x1 here. Uh, then XL here. Then x u, then e s and i max. So if you put in the parameters, so the conclusion is that you don't have to. Maybe it can work if you put in the values like by set equal to. Okay, so yes, you can you can try that. By set equal to 14, x is equal to 16, ps equal to 0 0.5, imax is equal to 100. Okay, yeah, you can try that, but I will see what is wrong after the after the class. But if you include those values here, you don't actually you don't actually need to um you don't need to if you put in these values here, you don't need to put in the parameters here. So I'm going to, I have less than one minute more. So I'm going to end the class now. Then you're going to rejoin using the next link, using the same link, sorry.